Hey guys, today we have a very exciting tutorial and it is about Stripe subscription. So as you know, natively Flutterflow doesn't have a Stripe subscription built in. They just have normal Stripe payments. Um, and the only native piece built in within Flutterflow related to subscription is called Revenue Cat. However, Stripe is a very big platform across the world. And I'd love to show you now how you can set up Stripe subscription in your Flutterflow app. Similar to my previous uh, tutorial on Stripe Connect, we will, we will cover Stripe subscription, which will involve making API calls to create the customer, allowing the customer to choose a product they want to subscribe to, and then having and listening uh, via webhook whether the customer has successfully started a subscription, in addition, the, retrieving the statuses of the subscription. So you know when the customer has you know not paid their um, subscription, therefore terminate access, or to continue allowing them to access the app or whatever feature you want. So this is what you'll be building. Firstly, we're able to set up a Stripe customer by pressing this button. You really don't need to press a button to uh, set up the Stripe customer because that technically should be on your onboarding flow. I'm just showing you here manually um, how to do it. So once the customer is created, they have a customer a key and here they can subsequently select a product they want to subscribe to. So let's just say they want to subscribe to the basic $19 per month plan. We will do this and they can go through the checkout of the subscription flow. Let's press subscribe. Next, once it's subscribed, we will also receive webhook information about the customer that, and the subscription plan. So the plan is ending in month time and the subscription status is active which means they've successfully paid for it. In addition, what is the subscription ID, price ID, and the product they've subscribed to. Lastly, we're able to manage the subscription. So here, we will allow the user to um, manage and upgrade um, their subscription. So for example, with from $19 per month plan, I would upgrade to an annual one of nine per year. This will charge the remaining payments and then update the end date of the subscription to March 20, March 12, 2025. You can also allow the user to um, manage your subscription uh, via your app through API calls, uh, but ultimately that's up to you. I've decided to use Stripe's inbuilt uh, management because it was the easiest to set up. So let's get started. So this is what you'll build. So the first thing we're gonna do is there is, I would like to point out that there is a documentation on Stripe on how to um, set up Stripe subscription. Um, and you can read it extensively to understand all kinds of customization. For example, setting a trialing period, um, what happens at the end of the, uh, do you require payment on sign up? do you not? Um, all these customization can be done by reading documentation. I'll just show you the most basic and you can build on top to suit your individual needs. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do similar to Stripe Connect is set up the API calls. So let's firstly uh, create an API group. Let's call this Stripe subscription. And the URL we need is the common one. So HTTP slash uh, this one, which is in the documentation. And we need to add some headers. So the two major headers we need are content type, content type, application, .next uh, URL included. Um, I'm just typing in, so copying from Stripe. And lastly, you also need your key. So you can get the key here in your developer dashboard. Um, so you can easily get the key in your developer dashboard on Stripe. So I'll just write that here. So you're right there on and press add group. Let's add the API calls we need. So they are in essence two big API, two major API calls we need to set up. And the first one is creating a customer. And the second one is um, the checkout session, allowing the customer to se select a subscription and subsequently pay for that subscription. So as always, remember to make your API call private. You can do it yourself. I won't do it here um, just to reduce the time. 
uh, but always make an API call private so people don't see this authorization key when you finally deploy it. So first thing I'm gonna do, add the API call in this group. So the call we need is create customer call. So basically what we need here is to create a Stripe customer. Think of Stripe customer is what Stripe is associating uh, with your users. So when you create a customer, the response would come back with a customer ID and this a Stripe customer ID. And let's save this Stripe customer ID into our database. Um, so this allows our app to speak to Stripe and tell them this is the customer that is uh, using the app right now in order to create a subscription later on. So let's quickly go back and change our database um, a little. So here the app is very simple, right? We have a page called create customer. Ultimately, you should create the Stripe customer on onboarding so they don't need to manually press create customer. But I'm just doing it here so you can manually see what's happening. So let's quickly add in the user a field called Stripe cus key or cus ID. It's gonna be off string. So let's set up that API call. Uh, you can of course read all about it, what you want, but let's just hypothetically say we only want the e we'll only pass the email. So let's go back to the API call. Um, where is it? So add API call, create customer. The endpoint is called customers. And what we need is a post request because we're sending data across this drive. And the body is going to be X URL encoded. And the parameter we pass in, based on documentation, you can just pass in um, an email because the email is a unique identifier to your user. So I'm going to set as a variable, email, email, it's going to be a string. Let's add this call. Uh, let's test to see if this works. So let's write an email of it's the, it's the at gmail.com and see if this works. Perfect. You can see here we've got a response from Stripe and this is the customer key. So we need to save this customer key somewhere. Maybe I just call it Stripe cus key, cus ID, and then press save. Perfect. So the next API call we need is the checkout sessions API key. So but before we start this, uh, we need to create some products within Stripe to understand what subscription are available. So you can read a lot about it on the documentation of Stripe products. So it's Stripe product catalog. You can read a lot about it. Um, the documentation is also here. Um, in essence, you have products. So what are you selling? And then you have prices underneath. So for example, if you have at the most basic sense, a company might have only one product, like Notion, you're selling Notion, um, access to Notion, and they would have different prices. So you might have a monthly price, uh, a basic tier or a premium tier and so on. Uh, so let's quickly set something up similarly. So let's just say we're only selling one product. Let's call it access to app. And then the product you're adding, you can write a description you want, you can write an image, you know, whatever you want, right? And let's just say it's basic access. And let's amount maybe $19, and it's gonna be building monthly. Let's add this product. And you can see here that we added a new product. And also let's add another price now. Uh, let's, this could be a more premium tier. And let's call this a flat price. Um, let's call this uh, maybe thirty dollars for premium, and it's billing monthly. So let's add this up. So you can see here there are now two price product keys uh, for this access to the app. So we can see here that access to the app we now have two tiers: nineteen dollars per month for the basic tier, and the pricing for the uh, and thirty dollars per month for the premium tier you will need, will need to use these price IDs to determine during checkout what the user has selected. Now that we set up Stripe in terms of our product setup, let's copy these keys into the app. So, because we need to use it later. 
your checkout flow can be different. I'm just using drop down for simplicity sake. You can put, you know, containers and then users select one product and then, you know, whatever design you want. I'm making it easy. So you know, the whole goal of this tutorial is about Stripe subscription, not really about design of checkouts. So here I have option label for basic $19 per month and premium $30 per month. And I'm just gonna copy the keys here the price key that we just configured from Stripe. So that's $19 and this is $30 per month. So what I want to achieve here is that when a user selects $19 per month, we will now be passing to Stripe this uh, price ID. And if they selected $30 per month, we'll pass in Stripe, pass to Stripe this price ID where we make that checkout session call. So let's go back to our subscription um, for the checkout session. So the checkout session, um, what we need is, like if you just read the checkout session documentation, which is here, checkout session, you can see you know, what kind of information is required. Um, but in most basic sense, I'll just cover it in this call and explain why we need it. So similarly to the create customer, let's call this API call create check check out session and there's going to be a post request the endpoint will be checkout slash sessions and then what we need is going to be a xml url encoded and what we need are quite a few parameters i'll just add it quickly so the first parameter we need is mode it's going to be a specific value um, if you recall the stripe connect it's the value was i believe was payment but today we're going to be using subscription so we're telling stripe we want to check out uh, in a subscription model. We need a success URL. Um, it's going to be, it's, I'm going to make this a variable. I'll create a variable later. Uh, I need to cancel URL. So this is basically what, where, what does the page direct to when they press, when they're successful in checking out and canceling in checking out. Um, what we also need is a line items zero dot price. So this is the price ID. We'll create a variable for these later. What we also need is line items, zero quantity. And we can just hard code this to one and uh, as a string. This is because you know, there's only one subscription we're signing up to. You can do it to two if it's buying subscription, but subscription models don't work like that anyway. Next, we need the customer. So this is the customer key. Um, we'll create a variable for later. And that's the most basic uh, requirements to make a Stripe subscription checkout. Um, if you read more about the documentation, you can uh, set up heaps of other things. So I believe you can set up trials. Um, how long is the trial for? When is a trial for? You can set up whether the payment is required at, um, at subscription or a payment is not required and Stripe will send an email to them based on your settings to remind them to add a payment. Ultimately, that's your choice. But here, these are the bare minimum we need to set up for a subscription. Now, let's add these variables. Oh no, let's add these variables. Success URL, that's good. Let's add create a variable, cancel URL, and create a variable called, maybe just call this price. It's easy to understand. And then it's gonna be all type string. Add call. So let's quickly test this. So the customer key we created, I don't know, maybe we just bring it back again. So this is the customer key response. And let's go to test the response like this. Maybe I just write HBS Google. Uh, maybe let me actually just copy this link. Copy paste. Price. This is the price ID. Let's just say we want to initiate um, the $19 per month subscription checkout. Uh, let's copy this ID right here. And let's test this to see if it works. Uh, okay, that didn't work because I totally forgot to set this variable here. Here you go, save it again. Um, test it. And voila, a session has been created. And then what we need is the URL response. So to launch it, so let's add JSON path here. Let's call this URL. Um, let's preview it and see if we can copy this and see what it looks like. 
So here you can say that the user, this is the email, the customer email that is linked to the customer ID. You can see here that we can do a checkout, right? Checkout flow, $19 per month, access to app. Right now, let's save this API call, just did. I'm gonna stop here. In the next lesson, we'll cover setting up the front end to make the API call. Remember to comment, like, or subscribe to keep updated on the series.